welcome our special guest, Dwi. Uh, it is so good to be with you again. Uh, and it's a long Thank time you, since we met in Zimbabwe. And uh, just uh, before you share a little bit about the preaching movement, uh, Dwi, but tell me about the situation over there, because you're almost uh, restricted to home at the moment, aren't you? Yes. Yes. Hello, everyone. It's good to see you all. Yeah, I'm, I'm Dwi from Bandung, uh, Indonesia. Now I'm a director of Langham Preaching in Asia and South Pacific. And I have Stephen here. I saw Stephen here with me. Stephen is the regional coordinator for South Pacific. Well, Hamdani is the movement coordinator for Indi uh, Indonesia. Hamdani is also here. Yeah, currently the situation hey. in Indonesia is, uh, is very alarming, I guess. The number of COVID is shooting up very quickly. And uh, for today, we have 31 new cases. And um, a lot of people are, they cannot get a bed in hospital. And uh, the oxygen is also now, it's getting very difficult to get. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, now we are back to lockdown. I mean, uh, three of my friends today were stopped by the police and chased to send them home again. They can, we cannot go out right now. I mean, police are everywhere. <laughs> they block the road. So, yeah. If you were to walk outside your house, you'd be told to return at the moment, would you? No, I mean, walking probably it's fine as long as it's here and we have to wear double masks right now. But if you drive, I mean, you know, in different area, it's, it's very difficult. And um, you presumably you're, you can't worship together at all. So have you got an online service going on for your church? Or, um... Yes, yes, yes. We have online service. And I guess that's what you're going to share with us about um, uh, Langham preaching as well, that a lot of that is in, in your region has had to go on uh, online. Yeah. Um, just, um, we're going to, including this time, we're going to try and be just under the hour. So it's great to have folk with us. I'm going to pass with, uh, over to Dwi, just for her to share for a bit, uh, at the moment. And I think Simon, uh, who's our, uh, uh supporter development, uh, uh, manager in the UK is going to, uh, sort of host our call, so to speak. But I just wanted to say hi as we started together and particularly to welcome, uh, Dwi, uh, on the call. Um, so I think, uh, Simon, we're over almost, uh, we're going to have a mix of video and interview. And, uh, again, there should be some time for questions at the end. So if you wouldn't mind sort of jotting down, if you had a question, you can share that by way of the chat box and we'll make sure, uh, that Dwee gets answers or tries to answer them, uh, before we, uh, we end, uh, uh, the call, but, um, right now. Welcome, and let's, um, I think, Simon, we kick off with a video, don't we? No. Yes, thank you, John. Yes, if you, uh, you were with us on our last uh, time that we did a, a daytime um, call, it was for to uh, remember John Stott Centini, the birth of John Stott at the end of April, uh, and you'd have seen Dwee in conversation then for about 10 minutes on that call, um, but that's part of a longer conversation that Dwee was part of uh, with Paul Windsor, um, so we're going to show most of that now. We're going to split it into three videos, uh, about sort of 10, eight minutes, eight, 10 minutes long each bit. Um, so we're going to show the first one now. Um, and then after that, uh, Dwee and me can have a bit of a chat about what we've just watched and listened uh, between Dwee and Paul. Uh, and we'll just go through that for three sections. Uh, and then, uh, like, uh, like John shared, uh, we can have uh, 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 questions uh, and a time of prayer at the end. Do we, you, you are uh, of a younger generation, one of the ones that has never met John yes. Stott. So how, did you, how did you get to know about him? What were some of the first ways in which you engaged with John Stott? I think I, I heard the name John Stott first time when I was in the university and I joined IFES. And then uh, I remember that was... Uh, we study from his commentary on the Book of Rome. 
And then when I went to the university, then I, you know, get to know more about him. And I really like one particular book that, you know, it's become like a handbook for me right now. The mm-hmm. book called Issues Facing Christians Today. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great book. So does that book have a, a particular life and purpose in the seminary where you're based? How, how has it uh, had an impact there? Yes, I think this book is kind of liberating for me because for a long time, uh, I have this kind of dichotomy view of Christianity, you know, uh, separation between what is secular and what is sacred. Uh, this book really helped me to see that everything is belong to God. And when I uh, started teaching at the seminary, I really want to, uh, to change the, uh, uh, the program study, you know, the, the MTH. Yeah, it was like, you know, pure systematic theology. And I really wanted to, you know, program study that really touched the real life in the society because of what John Stott wrote in the book. I couldn't make it happen until we have a, the new principle and I share the vision and it has the same and then, you know, now we have this uh, MTH, the program study where I become director, MTH in Transforming Culture and Society based on John Stott book. Um, what about, uh, you've, you've been involved in the Langham preaching program um, in Indonesia since the beginning, o- almost a decade now. It's when we first met. Um, I know now your role is not so much in, in Indonesia, but uh, in, in Asia more widely. But just for a moment, reflect on the, um, the landscape of the preaching program in, in Indonesia. Is there something that you can share in terms of a story of the impact that it's having in the life of a pastor or a congregation? Yes, I think a Langham preaching movement uh, came and it, um, yeah, it, it bring the uh, biblical preaching, you know, uh, even more stronger in Indonesia. And uh, I'm, I'm so excited that the people in Papua right now during the pandemic is really exciting to carry on this program. But more than just uh, biblical preaching, it's also influenced uh, somehow the mindset of you know, the holistic mission. As I yeah. said, so it's not only in influencing the pulpit, but also the way the church do and carry on their program um, more now engage with the social issues. What, what was preaching like uh, before uh, the Langham preaching work started and um, books and, and libraries? Can you, are you able to give us a little bit of a, a picture of what it was like so that we understand a little bit about the, the difference and the impact that, that Langham has made? Yeah, so I was, I was about almost giving up probably with the preaching ministry. Yeah, because I was like, you know, people, they don't like biblical preaching, you know, like they, you know, they just like, like, you know, light and easy and <clears throat> kind of motivational. But then my friend uh, introduced me, Langham preaching. It's like, what do you want to join? And I said, oh, this is John Stott. It must be biblical. <laughs> you know, uh, that's why I come it. I join, you know, uh, and, and it is, and it is, it was, it was so, you know, encouraging and inspiring and the level one that I took in Bogor together with you at the time. And it was so simple. The method was so simple, but, but deep, deep and, and clear. So I was like, oh God, this is the answer. This is the answer. This is, I want to get involved this because if this running, you know, it will change the culture of preaching across Indonesia, that I might not have vision for Asia. I think it will change the, the culture. And that's why I committed and I give myself to, to the, you know, to the Langham preaching movement. And, um, you know, for years I've been involved in this, I can see the difference right now. What you haven't touched on is that for a number of years, you've not just hosted one preaching club, you've had more than one, haven't you? So something of the, what, what you have benefited from, um, you, you've been passing on to, to others. Tell us a little bit about the clubs that you've been a part of, particularly in, in the pre-COVID time. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, after the preaching, uh, after the level one, I was so excited. I was so excited and I think I have three at that time, three parallel preachers club that I lead. Yeah, I, I changed my small group study into <laughs> preaching clubs <laughs> with the uh, university students and then with the uh, preachers club that I got from the level one training. And then uh, another one, you know, my preaching class, uh, my small group from the church. So running together, three of them, and while I'm teaching. But I, I don't know how I did it, but it was, I'm so passionate. And I, I want to train more people uh, to preach biblically. Yeah, and uh, it changed, really. It, it changed. It's, it took one person, probably it took more than two years <laughs> to change the habit. Yeah, especially the preachers, it changed the habit. But in that preaching club, they say that, you know, I know it's been hard for you because it's my change is so slow. <laughs> yeah, but finally they, they got it. They got it and it changed. And uh, not only the, the change in the pulpit, but the excitement of the preacher itself. Well, that's, no, I'm exciting to teach the Bible. That's something that is, you know, and, you know, it's encouraging for me. It's really, really something that I like, yeah. One of the distinctive features of the Indonesia work from how I see it is that the uh, preaching movement committee there in the country um, had memorandums of agreement with whole denominations, right? The entire denominations were involved in the, in the training. That's quite unique, I think, for our work around the world. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, that is something that is I'm also excited about because through the Langham preaching, we kind of bring together a unity or harmony or networking among so many different denominations that they never really worked together before. Mm. Uh, not only denomination, different, because some of the churches here, you know, Indonesia have so many, what you call that, people groups. And yeah. the church is usually based on that people group, like, the, the church for Batpak people, the church for the Chinese, you know, the church for, you know, the Toraja people. Through the Langan preaching, not only like we came together, you know, so many denominations were able to work together, but also across ethnicity, across boundaries of, uh, I mean, social and economic classes yeah. and education wise. So yeah. I, one of a trainer here, he shared that, you know, before Langham preaching, I never really worked with someone outside my denomination. And now I'm a trainer. I can teach in, you know, this people, Batak people at Batak church and Tarajan people, Tarajan church. Something that is really, um, I mean, it, when I heard that, it's really touched my heart. Like, yeah. but it's not only strengthening the pulpit, but it's also strengthening the society because yeah. of that, the, 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 yeah, the conflict, you know, it's, become less and yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. Just focusing on the pulpit ministry or the preaching, John Stott had a very uh, sort of defined approach, uh, opening a passage, staying in the passage, um, explaining it and uh, ever so clearly. Are there signs of that kind of preaching tradition uh, being born and strengthened in the life of the Indonesian church? Yes, of course. I mean, before the Langham preaching, I hardly hear a sermon based on the facts, exposing, I mean, the facts. It's mostly topical or as, you know, theological, you know, bringing doctrine, doctrinal teaching in the pulpit. Uh, yeah, but with Langham preaching, I think people are more, uh, I think the understanding about the Bible is increasing. A lot of pastors who are coming to the, you know, the, the training, they said like, you know, I've been a pastor for 25 years, but this is the first time that I really fall in love with the Bible. And even like, this is the first time that I met Jesus personally. That's, that's really amazing. Thank you. Thanks, Dwee. I, I, I was, when, when you recorded this early in the year, it must have been February time was it Dwee I imagine it when you recorded this with Paul and I gave it over to Sarah in the US to, to edit uh, and we said you know we need about nine minutes and, uh, and Sarah was saying no how do I get that down to nine minutes 
and you know, hopefully this this time we can show the whole conversation because the whole everything that you just said just then for those 10 minutes we've just been listening is just really uh, encouraging um you mentioned uh, so langham preaching in in indonesia and you mentioned uh, level one so, so so how many levels and what what does level one in, involve for, for langham preaching all right. So in in, um, in the seminar that we have, basically we have three. Level one, le level two is uh, Old Testament, and then level three is New Testament. You know, either, you know, sometimes they change the order, but uh, level one is the basic. We teach the basic rules of expository preaching and uh, without differentiate the, you know, based on the gender or anything, but uh, we are teaching the basic observation of the text and then how to move from the text to the sermon. And we also uh, teach the, um, the Bible as the big, the big story of the Bible and uh, the integrity of the preacher and basic conditions uh, as a preacher, you know, what do you have to believe? And decision is, you know, in many cases, it's uh, a little bit controversial, you know, because some churches might not believe that the Bible is actually the word of God. So it's created a little bit uh, conversation and debate on that. But oh, I, my experience when I teach that one time in one particular denomination and the pastor stood up and challenged me like, you know, well, how do you prove that the Bible is the, the word of God? You know, like, because in my seminary, you know, we don't believe that. And this is just, you know, a human who, who wrote this. And this is a pastor who said that, but instead of you making a debate, in the, you know, into the seminar, I said, well, this is what, what we believe in the Langham preaching. And uh, if you want more conversation, we can talk about it later. But at the end of the seminar, you will get a book, that the book from John Stott book, and you will read and you learn more about it. You know, that's why the literature is very important, not only the preaching you know, program. Yeah. Fantastic. That's a fantastic story. So how many... Um how many people in Indonesia have gone through that level one training then? Yeah, I just I just checked with Hamdani here, the <laughs> coordinator with movement from Indonesia. So it's a, a, approximately it's about uh, 6,500 people. Wow. I think not more than that because, yeah, the pandemic, of course, yeah. That's fantastic. And of course, that's uh, that's Indonesia and we could times yes, that another 81 countries that to the to the preaching movements are in um, mm. that, that, that's amazing that's amazing and right at the end of the video you mentioned and you just shared that other story about the pastor but there's at the beginning and there you shared about that pastor that that uh, you know fell in love with the bible for the first time in 25 years which uh, mm. yeah makes your mind boggle a bit but <laughs> uh, glad he got there eventually um how do you do you see that sort of so i think that's fantastic that the pastors and the preachers are are, 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 are engaging with the bible and, and, and falling in love with it and how to preach it and expound it do you, do you hear the stories on the ground as well of sort of people mm -hmm. that are listening now to those preachers that they they see that difference that they're falling in love with the bible i guess oh uh, the, from the congregation you mean yeah yeah uh, yeah, I never heard that the congregation say I'm falling in love with the Bible because of, you know, my pastor preach the Bible faithfully. But I heard quite often that people say, oh, I never heard someone explain that to me about that, you know, passage. And oh, really, I, I want to learn more about that passage. You make me curious about this passage. So it's, it's increased curiosity and and yeah, that's that's that quite often I hear that kind of comment. Yeah. No, that's that, that's good. Like if it if it raises questions, like that's good. Like it did, like that pastor that you were sharing about who was not agreeing with you at uh, the training that it that yeah. it does. One one of my favourite quotes because um, I think we'll we'll talk about it in the in the, one of the next videos, uh, and when we have the uh, um, excellence in giving that do all the uh, the, the, the the background of uh, of seeing how, what the impact is of of the programs. And they're interviewing a pastor's wife, uh, and they're saying, you know, is your yeah. is your pastor uh, is your yes. has your husband become a better preacher? Uh, and, and she's and she says, oh, I don't know if I can comment on that, but he's definitely become a better husband. Um, yeah, this is a story of one one preacher in Papua. I guess I think Paham Danny remembered that one probably. 
yeah and it's, it's in the in the hub okay so he said no my has my husband comment on me that now you know i'm a better preacher because of langam because before he, he doesn't want even to kind of what are you talking about you know but after <laughs> langam now i understand what you are talking about and see the bible <laughs> Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Dree. Let's go back to the video. Let's watch the next bit. What um, excites you most about the, the vision for the future in terms of Lang and preaching, particularly across Asia and the South Pacific, which is your main responsibility now? Uh, yeah, it's something that's really exciting me uh, with Langham preaching is uh, in across the Asia, it's because Langham preaching is um, aiming or prioritizing the country with the you know uh, least resources, like the country that is so struggling with with poverty and and everything. So that's in a way when I you know minister to the to this country, it's not yeah, it's not only like bringing the program or trying to, you know, to make the organization expanding or look good, but also contributing something to the, to the society, to the nations where we are going, you know, because I believe that from the, the Langham logic, you know, that, that we always <laughs> say, I add one, you know, uh, another, another aspect on it because Langham logic start with the church but I started with the society. God wants a society to be transformed and that transformation should start from the church that are maturing and how the church maturing it's from you know this and we can continue from that. Yeah so yeah this is what I really exciting about when when we talk about India when we talk about uh you know big country or the Pacific I really do hope that through the pulpit, we can transform, help the church to be mature, and the maturing churches will transform society. You know, Dwee, one of the things that was a real feature of John Stott's ministry was his capacity to make friends and to lead through those friendships. One of the things I've enjoyed about watching you take up this role is that you have a capacity to make friends. And tell, tell us a little bit about your your team that you lead because it's really through that team that the impact of Lang and preaching is felt across Asia just as freely as you are able with security concerns but uh, just introduce us to the people that are on your team that you lead and who are your friends yes well in uh, Lang and preaching Asia and the Pacific South Pacific surely I'm not the only one because we are leading this region as a team together so I have uh, Phil, uh, he's Phil Nicholson, he is the regional coordinator for East Asia. And he is doing really amazing, amazing work across the East Asia. Um, yes, yeah, so very, very capable and very humble person, very experienced as well. And also I have uh, Praveen and Pina, a couple working in India. And I think we have similar concern to, you know, equip the uh, the pastor who are you know who don't have right high education and living in the poverty and langham preaching just really a nice fit to that program that they already done yeah and uh, and during the COVID also India not a Benji for example is not only you know concerned about preaching but also helping the people there and also I think uh, Stephen Stephen is the RC for the for South Pacific yeah. This has a big heart for the people there and also for the Aboriginal pastor. Yeah, so yeah, I'm, although now it's very difficult to get connected with the people in the South Pacific, but yeah, we are still optimistic. And uh, yesterday we had a team meeting and um, uh, Stephen will try to, you know, to make it happen for the Aboriginal people in Sydney very soon, I guess, yeah. You brought this team together, and I think you met only once, and uh, mm -hmm. then COVID came, so it's it's been difficult. But I think your commitment to um, building the friendships uh, has been s s so well uh, appreciated, and and is very much in the kind of approach that uh, John John Stott had as well. 
In terms of um, churches and community and culture, you've talked a little bit about it, Dwee, but um, what's what's the impact um, that you would like to see in in those worlds through through the work of uh, Langham? Direct or indirect, the impact of Langham preaching that will bring for the society, I think we can see it's happening right now, you know, because um, Langham preaching is like a family, Paul. Have you seen, you know, yeah, I, I can say, you know, in Indonesia, you know, it's really like a family. Uh, so it's not like just a tr program training. So when we have a preaching clubs or we have, we are not only provide a seminar, but we also provide a family and support. So we really help one another. So, um, yeah, well, when we heard that someone, for example, a pastor, you know, needs help to send someone to school, the, the whole Langham family will stand up and, and help. That's what happening here in Indonesia. Yeah, and yeah, and through that person only, you know, we, we, we change someone's life. Yeah, and uh, yes, a, a lot of things I think happening, uh, probably not only with Langham preaching, but also probably like, uh, Langham literature providing books and resources. That's way of educating people. We have in Langham preaching these, these barometers, you know, where we're trying to um, have a way of measuring the growing mm -hmm. impact. Yep. Um, can you share a little bit about some of those? Maybe the diversity one and, and the way um, we try to become more diverse and also maybe the financial one, how, how we aim to become uh, financially self-sustaining at the local level. How are those things going in Indonesia and in Asia and the South Pacific? Yeah, we had this discussion, uh, I think a few months ago with my team during the team meeting, uh, when we did the maturity barometer, we are measuring each movement across Asia and one thing that is stood out and everyone agree is this uh, uh, self-sustaining. Yeah, yeah. So everybody feel like, uh, well, the support from the international with you know everything, especially funding, is been a great help. Yeah, they said it's, it's huge and uh, and it's also motivated them, like especially in big country. You know, like, you know, we, why Langham have to provide everything for us? No, we have, a, our economic is now is developing and we should not, you know, continue to receive, but we started to be self-sustained and probably help other. Yeah, that's what I heard from the big country. And also in India say that, you know, there are a lot of people here, you know, poverty is great, but also people who has money. And we, let, let's try, we will try to be self-sustained, you know, slowly, 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 that's what they say. And then the real example is in Indonesia, Paul, I think, you know, where uh, people are just take the vision of Langham preaching and they understand how important it is. And, and we want it to be self-sustained since the beginning and not only self-sustained, but we also want to help other countries. I'll, I'll pick straight up on that, that point that you're just making at the end there about being self self sustained, which um, yeah is is common sense, isn't it? Like you were saying, it it it, it, it helps move resources somewhere else to, to start it off. So how um, is in how close is you, well? Let's stick with Indonesia. How, how close is Indonesia to being that sort of self sustained preaching movement? Um. <clears throat> As far as I know, Indonesia is self-sustained since the beginning okay. of the program. And um, yeah, we, we got, for, for some project, we still have received help from international, but it's not like, you know, um, but for the running the program itself, we are all like self-sustained. And even in, I think when in the beginning, when we started the program in um, East Malaysia, uh, we send our trainer from, from Indonesia with our budget, you know, so that's a, that's a way of, you know, cross-pollination, like one country helping another, not only the money, but also with resources like the person, you know, and then now we have, um, 
Indonesian trainer Mifang also started the movement in Timor Leste, in East Timor. So that is cross pollination, not only funding but also the I mean facilitator. And uh, now we are, I think it's finished. Uh, translating John Stott book and also making it an audio because it's going to be difficult to send a physical books to Malaysia because of you know the restriction regulation and everything. So with this audio, it will be easily transferred and they can listen. You know, that's that's what we are trying to do because in Indo Indonesian is spoken not only in, within Indonesia, but in some other countries. I should have asked this at the beginning, in, um, uh, Dewey. So the preacher movement in Indonesia, you, you, from the start, so when, when was the start? When, when did it start in Indonesia? I think it was 2009. Right, okay. The so first, so yeah, you're the about 12-ish 12, years old. Yeah. You don't feel 12, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it feel like just a few years ago, isn't it? <laughs> It's well, been a long time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then I think the other main thing I just wanted to pick out of that video uh, that you talked about a couple of times, and I know uh, Chris Wright picked up on it on the John Stock one, um, is about the social impact and the society. Yeah. The society impact there that, uh, um, you know, re rewriting John Stott's um, uh, Langham logic, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I mean, this, you're absolutely, I, I completely agree with you, Drew. I think it's really interesting. <laughs> I mean, how do you see that happening on the ground? What do you see yeah, right, yeah. happening? First of all, I'm sorry, you know, Paul said to me, <laughs> you are ruining John Stott logic, logic, and it's not like spread like widely. I'm sorry for that. Yeah. <laughs> but I would love to start with the society because I just feel like if the church only stop with the church by the church itself so what is the benefit for society i mean we are sent to be a blessing to be light and salt in the world not not making the church like the yeah my friend say uh johan my colleague here said the discipleship is not trying to make the christian more christians only you know the people more holy for the sake of holiness only but also to uh, to change society if you can so that's uh you know, in Indonesia, I don't know, it's probably also in many other countries, there's always a tension between social work and uh, preaching the gospel. So as, as if the two are separate things, right. you know, and the, the church, I know the church that taking up Langham preaching program, they are also good in doing a lot of social work. Like all of them, even the church in Bogor, I think we have Ibu Beatrice here. Her church is such an example of that very good in doing but how to link this together you know like oh what is the basis of you are doing that if it's not the bible you know so it's, yeah it's already happened it's already there but i think what john Stott said if we want to emphasize on it is to link the two together and make it even stronger and for the evangelical church here who are tend to be so i mean uh as i said suspicious with people who are doing social work, like you are too much on doing that without bringing the gospel. So we can encourage them to apply what they learn from the Bible and thinking how to care more for the society. Yeah, I think it is, it is, it is already there in, in, on the field, on the ground and Langham preaching can help to bring, to tie them together, glue them together, but it also encourage more of this social impact. Oh, no, that's wonderful. Thank you, Dwee. Thanks, Dwee. Right, let's um, uh, let's move on to the last uh, the last last video. Part of the the vision that John Stott uh, birthed and continues on through Langham Partnership are the three programs: the the scholars program, the the literature program, and the the preaching program. Now, you're one of these um, exciting people that. Um, is linked to all three. Uh, before we, we look at the impact of the three programs um, and how they can work together, uh, one of the impacts is that, that you yourself uh, are involved in all three. Can you just briefly tell us your story um, in terms of uh, Langham scholars and, and Langham literature? Because we've heard about preaching. How, how, how are you involved in scholars and literature as well? I started with Langham preaching first in Indonesia. And then uh, 
at the time I was uh, also uh, thinking of, you know, doing my doctorate study because my school needs someone with PhD. So when I apply and I accepted and I knew Langham Scholar from your presentation, <laughs> Langham Preaching, I said, oh, maybe I can apply. <laughs> yeah, so I did apply. I did apply and I got accepted. So then I become a Langham Scholar. And it's amazing the support that they provide, a fellowship of scholar every year. And this, uh, you know, the Langham Scholar care, it's amazing. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I know a lot of people here who studied abroad and got their PhD and come back and they just become a lonely scholar and they just trapped with their, you know, like routines administration in, in their school. But what is different with me, I think I'm really, you know, lucky or <laughs> have a privilege because I have this Langham scholar, Langham literature and Langham preaching on me, helping me, supporting me. Langham scholar continue, you know, to have fellowship as a scholars and also providing a lot of opportunity for me together with Langham literature. Dwi, why don't you, you get involved with this? Do you think you can write something like this? Oh, do you want to go to the conference? You know, we can help you funding, you go there, you know? And uh, because of that, I, I built a lot of net network. Now I'm involved in a literature project uh, in Asia. It's a theological, uh, Old Testament theology for Asian context. So I'm writing on the, you know, the prayer in the Psalms and how you relate to the Asian context. And also with this um, commentary project, commentary for the, um, the Muslim believer background, yeah. I mean, one of the ways in which the three programs have an impact is the way they combine together in a single person like, like you, and they're integrated in the way that you live and work. Um, beyond your own personal story, and as you cast your eye around Indonesia and maybe parts of Asia, how, how do you see the, the three programs um, working together to enhance the impact uh, of what Langham is, is doing? I think the three programs work together, supporting one another in a beautiful way. You know, for example, I mean, for sure, Langham preaching uh, will not complete without uh, literature. You know, we need books, we need resources to equip these pastors. Yeah, and we need we need a lot of them. And I'm glad that Langham literature also encourage the uh, the local writers to write in their own language, and that is really important. That's what we need. And you know, and we also need a scholar. To, to think through theologically, you know, and how this truth become relevant to the people in their country. So we need a scholar within the country. And that's what Langham scholar is doing, you know, just, you know, spotting the potential people within the country and then send them to provide education for them and they will come back. And, and not only that and provide help and support so that they can produce something for the country. And especially if they are doing it in their own language and, you know, it's impacting the nations, well, it's not only impacting one person or one particular church. Yeah. Even in one given uh, seminary, it, you sometimes lose sight of what a single PhD person, um, the impact they can have in a, in a country like Pakistan or Cambodia where theological education has has not um, increased, but a, a, a single scholar can make a big difference, can't they? Yeah. I want there will be a leader like me emerge from this country. You know, who knows, you know, someone like, who, who, who will never imagine someone from Asia, from Indonesia. I was like in the little town Bandung and I was, there, <laughs> yeah, but Langham preaching give me opportunity and then like widen my horizon and part. So I, I want something like that will happen 
again, you know, from within the Cambodia or, you know, that, that, that country. Mm. To see your story and, and your testimony uh, multiplied in, in the lives of others and yeah. the impact that that has, yeah. What are your, your dreams and hopes in terms of the future development of uh, the Langham preaching work uh, in, in, in Indonesia and across Asia? Yes, Paul, my, my dream for, you know, future with Langham preaching is I want to see the Langham preaching movement will be, you know, carry on in everywhere across Asia, especially in the difficult country. I'm glad that we started, uh, you know, we'll, we'll start introduction session in East Timor, that is a new movement, and also uh, probably Bhutan, hopefully. Yeah, and I, yesterday I just got a, I've been emailing people if they know someone in Japan, because I've been studying about Japan and I have heart for it. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, you know, in a, in a difficult country like that, that's, I want long I'm preaching to, be there and to to make an impact, you know, to empower and yeah, and to support the pastor and to bring biblical preaching movement. And another one is I want to see more of the um, indigenous uh, literature that emerge within the context, yeah, you know, within you know from the Langham preaching or from the scholar or whatever. That's I really wanted to you know to start to be developed. Yeah, I know it's Indonesia probably have been translating a lot of books, but I want someone within the country to write something, but don't say it should be me, but <laughs> people need to write something, uh, you know, in Indonesia or in South Pacific. And, you know, I, I met people in across Asia, in the Women Forum, for example, or in, in uh, our meeting, in Bangkok, and I meet a lot of, I can see that a lot of potential there. In India, you know, the team, so bright people. Yeah, I hope one day we can produce something within the context. Again, thanks, Dwee. I, 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 I don't know how many times I've watched that video now, Dwee, but uh, a smile on my face every time. And I just think, uh, uh, you know, think of you as a, um, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a scholar, and there's you know another 300 Langham scholars like you, uh, dotted around the dotted around the world doing uh, doing what you're doing, which is just fantastic. And over is it 74 or something that are in uh, that are um, that are in, they're studying at the moment. So I think you know it's a wonderful place to be, and uh, uh, and uh, and hearing this and just. Uh, getting your, your glimpse of it in what's uh, in what's what's happening around the world it's wonderful and you also talked about literature work and the bits of literature that you're uh, involved in uh, at the uh, uh, at the moment um, here in the UK we just um, um, uh, got an appeal running to raise funds for the um, for the South Asia um, study Bible at the moment um, obviously, the commentary came out five, yeah. six years ago now. Um, if there's anything you can tell us about that, about the commentary, you're perhaps not directly involved in that, or you perhaps you perhaps share the, the need for it at least. Yeah, I'm not directly involved with that. I believe that this commentary has been very useful for people across South Asia, not only India, but I heard that an interest to translate it into uh, Bangladeshi. I don't know how to call it, Bangla probably, the, the language. Yeah, and also in in other language there. Yeah, this kind of literature is really needed. We're starting to come towards the end of our, uh, end of our sorry, if you do want to support that project, then please just do head to our website, uh, uk.langham.org, and you'll soon find the details on there, uh, uk.langham.org. And you'll soon find those details. Uh, we're coming towards the end of our time. Um, it's it's flown by for me. I'm sorry if it's been a bit boring for everybody else, but it, it's flown by for me. Uh, it's been absolutely fascinating. Uh, but we, we definitely need to just close in a time of prayer. And I, I shall just start the time of prayer. Uh, and I'm going to ask John just to, to close at the end and we'll leave a bit of uh, space in between. If people want to pray, then please just unmute yourself and, and, uh, and we can just pray. 
uh, for Dwee uh, and the work that she's been sharing with us. Dwee, is there anything in particular you'd like us to be praying for? You, you've mentioned a lot of things already uh, around yeah. uh, COVID and translators and new leaders and writers and uh, yeah. but, but, uh, nothing, nothing's beyond our God, but anything else that you'd like us <laughs> to, to pray for? I pray for my seminary here. I mean, as uh, we feel strongly that God give us a vision of, as I said, um, like what John Stott trying, you know, to do, like to make impact on the society. Yeah, and we have, I'm glad I have, my principal is here now joining this prayer. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, his name is Sutrisna. I think, Pasutrisna, can you say hello or whatever? <laughs> Hello, it's great to see all of you. Yes. I'm, I'm glad to hear everything. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Wonderful. Anything else, Dweep? I think that's it. That's it. The COVID situation and uh, Lang I'm preaching and also the, the work with uh, my seminary. I think that's okay. it. Well, let's just spend sort of five minutes in, in prayer or so. Like I say, I'll, I'll, I'll start us. Um, and then if people want to say a prayer then please just do unmute yourself and, and pray uh, and John will close us towards the end um, but uh, Dwee I'll just take this moment now just to say you know thank you for your time early in the year to record that video uh, and thank definitely you. the time now to, to share with us it's been wonderful and a, a great encouragement for us I'm sure I'm sure but let's pray Father God we thank you uh, for this time we thank you uh, that uh, technology is held up, that uh, that we can just have this conversation between the UK uh, and Indonesia and all the people uh, logging in from around the globe. Lord, we thank you that uh, you just remove those barriers, that we are together here uh, as one family, uh, as Dwee has been sharing with us, uh, and that we can come together, uh, encourage each other, uh, to love each other, uh, to inspire each other. Uh, and Lord, we just come now in this time of prayer uh, to lift Dwee uh, and Langham preaching uh, and Langham partnership uh, up to you uh, with the, the thoughts and the prayers and the, the news that we've heard. Uh, we come in prayer now, Lord. Amen. Please speed the uh, audio production of these Indonesian translations of worthwhile Langham literature items and use them globally. Uh, since the uh, Indonesian diaspora is so great and so many people speak that language. Amen. Father, we thank you for Dwee and all that she's doing. And we thank you for the excitement of Langham preaching, meaning folks getting to find out that you have spoken. It is your word that the living God has spoken. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that that excitement would grow. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for Dwee's colleagues and for Sutrisna here this, this, this session. We pray, Heavenly Father, you would bless this seminary. May it be fortified in all truth. May it have a unity and a love amongst all the colleagues. We pray, Heavenly Father, they would support each other and be a great support to the church locally. We pray, Heavenly Father, you would be with them all. In Jesus' name. Amen. As she is trying to expand the movement in different places in Asia, we ask you, Lord, to equip people who can help her so that your glory can continue to be seen for everywhere. We ask you, Lord, to even raise people who can continue to work for her, together with her, so that they continue to publish for the resources, more resources, so that your people will get where to, to resource and to, so that they be fruitful when they, they are preaching, when they are teaching your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for today's uh, ministry uh, in uh, Indonesia. 
as much as uh, Southeast Asia. Thank you, Lord, for using her widely on Langham preaching as well as uh, Langham uh, distributing Langham literature. And um, thank you very much, Lord, for the uh, preachers or pastors who are first time hearing about Bible-oriented preaching and Bible-centered preaching. Lord, they come to know the truth a little more clearly. Thank you for their witness. And we praise you for that, that you are working in that part of the world. We pray that you will continue to work for your glory, that many people may be benefited by Langham preaching, literature, and other types of work of Langham. And we pray that you will bless her and bless her family bless her, her colleagues, bless her, her seminary particularly. Thank you for the principal who is present here. Lord, we pray for the other colleagues, the staff of seminary. Lord, let them be truth, truthful for your word, for teaching the scripture and preaching the scripture. And we pray that you will anoint them uh, with the power of the Holy Spirit. Let them always preach and teach the anointment of the Holy Spirit. We don't have anything on our own. We have to depend upon you. So therefore, Lord, we ask for the anointment of the Holy Spirit that they may be filled uh, with the Spirit and they may speak um, the word of God. Uh, as it is recorded in the scripture, we pray that you will bless her ministry and bless uh, all the people who are working with her. Thank you so much, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We'll pray for Dwi in Bahasa Indonesia. Bapak di dalam surga, terima kasih untuk kasih dan kemurahan Tuhan karena engkau memakai Dwi dengan luar biasa. Kami memuji kebesaran kasihmu dan kami memohon hikmat bijaksana dan kesehatan baginya di dalam melakukan visi yang sangat besar kiranya namamu dipermuliakan di dalam hidupnya. Segala pujian, kemuliaan, dan hormat bagi Tuhan Yesus Kristus. Amin. Amin. Heavenly Father, we just uh, thank you for the uh, fellowship that we've had on this call. And we just pray that you might continually lay on our hearts some of the, uh, uh, the messages that we've heard and the concerns that you've given us. And uh, into a hurting world, maybe even a fearful world at this time, through the megaphone of pain maybe, that we just ask that you might give courage uh, to us all, but especially those that are involved in ministries in particular places. And therefore we do pray for Dwi and her team at, that trouble, at this troubled time in those areas. And we just don't want to presume on your protection, Father. We lift her, her family and friends and her colleagues to you and ask your blessing and protection. And maybe just now uh, we can just use together the words that we have as the grace in whatever uh, heart tongue comes to just a cacophony of sound as we close this session just with the words of the grace. May the grace, the grace of our Lord, of our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, 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 the love, the love, the love of God, God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. You too. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Dwee. Uh, we our next Lang and Live is the 22nd of um uh, of July in a couple of weeks' time at 7 p.m. Uh, at UK time. Um, and we've got Jonathan Lamb joining us then because it's during the Keswick Convention here in the UK. Uh, and Jonathan's heavily involved with that and, and Langham. So Jonathan's joining us and he's going to be talking to Amika, one of our, uh, our associate director. Uh, for preaching in Africa. So if you want to join us then, we should be sending links out um, later on. But again, thank you ever so much for your time this lunchtime in the UK. Uh, and Dwee, thank you again so much for your time and, uh, uh, and your work uh, that you're doing over there.